So I'm just going to add some HTML like this. Uh, add customer like so. And then here I will say uh, form like this. Now, always the form needs a CSRF token like that. Otherwise, things will not work well. So we'll put that there. And then we'll put an input of type name, or of type text, sorry. And then we'll call it name because this will be the name of the customer. Then let's put a placeholder there. Placeholder customer name, like so, okay. Then I'll duplicate this. We have age and we have um, email as well. Okay. So here type, I'm just going to say email and put email there as well. Customer email. And then here I will replace this with the uh, type is uh, number and placeholder customer age like so and this one is age and then of course i need to add a button here so input of type submit we don't need a name here we don't want to submit anything from here so we'll save value is equal to uh, save something like this but the important thing here is to add our method as post. Great, so now we can actually add a customer. So refresh, and there we go. So maybe we, we may need a title of some kind. So let me just put an H3 here and say, add new customer. So that at least we know what's going on. Let, uh, let me just add a better font here. I don't know what whether really it's better or not, but uh, just better than the default. Let's add a font family of Tahoma. Oh, why does my mouse keep moving away? Okay, in the middle of the typing process. There we go, so add new customer. So we have customer name, customer email, customer age. So here I'm just going to add a default value which is uh, the value is uh, at least they have to be 13 and above so let's try that okay so customer age customer or maybe 18 and above anyway regardless uh, this is what we've got so now what i want to do is just to see everything uh, in here if i go to the controller now uh, this is the view for when we the add view itself but when we want to add let's create another function here when once we post the items okay add uh i don't know we can call it add customer okay. so these are just arbitrary names you can name them anything really but we want to use the request here because we want this to accept the post request. So request, uh, this is the casting, just like string, integer. So this is request. It means this belongs to the request class. So whatever variable name you put here is up to you. It can be A like that, and that's no problem. So then we still need to show the customer view, but if things go well, we want to go to where we list the customers, right? So here I will create a function again. What have I done there? Function list like so, so that we can view everything. So here I'm just going to return. Okay, I'll add something here later. So if things go well, uh, if things don't go well, we return the add customer view. If things go well, we redirect to something else. Okay. So here, what I will do is, uh, there is this add customer. Right here, once we post, I want to see the data. So what I'm going to do is say print readable, like so. And then print R is going to have request so that we see what's in the request. Let's just say input, something like that. 
is this a function? Well, you do tell me if there's an error there anyway. So of course we will need a controller to handle when we do actually post. So here we'll change this get to post like so. And then here, instead of add view, which one are we looking for? And uh, we want it to come to this one, add customer. So come back here and let's put that in add customer like so. Okay, so we have a controller for when we do the get and when we actually post, then they go to different functions. So when we are just viewing it, it's here. When we post, it comes to this. This will be used for when we want to list the items from the database itself. Alrighty then. So now for now, I just want to see what's in there. So let's give it a shot. So if I type uh, a name, John uh, email, I'll just say email at email.com and then hit save. Okay. So now, as you can see, it's showing me the content of what I have posted here. So there's John, there's name, which is John, there's email, and then there's age. But here there's also a token which is used by Laravel to make sure that uh, the form is legitimate. Okay, so things are going well. Now what we can do is we can try to validate this data. So I'm just going to say validated, validated be equal to, and then I will use my request and then say validate like so. So let's put an array in there to put the validate uh, stuff, shall we? So I will do this, validate, validate. Let me move this right about here, like so, below that. All right, so what am I going to do here? I want to validate the name. So the name is going to be um, required, of course. And then let's put our pipe there. It's going to be required and it needs to just be a string. I'll put a comma, duplicate this three times since we have three items. Make sure the last comma isn't there. And then I'll say email and then this other one will be age. So all of them are required, so that's okay. And then here I'll just put uh, email. And on this one, I'll just say numeric. Now, if you don't know, if you want to view more of this stuff, obviously you can go to the Laravel website, to the docs, uh, because everything is very well documented there. Okie dokie. So if things are looking up, let's see what we get. So let's try and add errors intentionally. So if I try to save here, Okay, so I don't get uh, anything, uh, not even that, because once things are validated here and they don't go very well, we don't even get to this point at all. So for us to be able to view some errors, we have to do it over here. So here I'm just going to add a div of some kind. And then on this div, I will, uh, let me put some PHP tags so that we can uh, do some, with it. So I will put a style and add a color of red so that we can know these are actually errors. And then here we just have to uh, figure it out. So I'm just going to say uh, for each, I will add a for each here. I think I should have just used, uh, since we are in blade, no need for these PHP tags at all. So let me use blade since it's there. So I'll say for each like that, go through the errors, yeah? So I'm going to say errors because there's a, an errors variable created in advance by Laravel. So I want to get all of the items in the errors as error, like that. So it will look through these if they exist. And then here I'll say end for each, like that. And then if things are good here, obviously I want to echo out the error itself like so. Great. So once I echo out that error, um, I think what I want to do also is add a break tag, uh, like so. So that there's space between the errors. So let's see if uh, things are working well. So save. 
and you see our errors there the name field is required the email field is required at least we have something there so it's just those two isn't it okay so let me add a name as i had done i put john and uh, mail at email.com and let's save so once we do that things go well and then you see this code actually runs here so it means by the time this code is running here it means everything went well with the validator okay so we can put some code to save here so we finally come to the point where we actually save some data mm -hmm. so now let's try to save now in order to save let's include our let's include our uh, customer model so the namespace for this one is app models right so let's copy that come to the controller here and I want to add it here so I'm just going to say use I'll say use app models and then let me add my actual model name which is a customer like so Oosh. okay great so if you're not sure about the uh, where is this customer controller if you're not sure about the namespace for let's say for example here when I had uh, duplicated this to add the customer controller if you're not sure about its namespace just go to the controller itself and copy the namespace from the top which is exactly this and then just add the name of the class so same thing here that I did just uh, copy the app models that's the namespace for this model and when I come here I can add it here use so now we have access to the customer model so what we're going to do is just create a new model here so I'm just going to say uh, Gus I'm just going to call it Cus. that's the class there customer class is equal to uh, new customer like so okay so now <clears throat> I want to add items in here <coughs> excuse me so I want to add columns here so if I go back to my table there are columns there's name there's email there's age so if I come back here uh, I can say name be equal to we want to set it to what is in the request there so the request does have a name field so we're going to do that like so so we have name we have email we have age okay so we know they are validated just correctly and then all we need to do now is just say cas uh, save that's it we are done so once we do that let's come back here and give it a shot so I'm just going to say John uh, email at email.com and then let's uh, save okay so we have a few errors here of course as expected mm -hmm. so this is the query that was run insert into customers so it's correct it found the right table at least there's name image age but then there's updated at and then there's created at okay values these are the values right here so like I said earlier it wants to uh, to add the created at um, column and the updated at column now there are times when you don't want to add these to your table you think okay my table is okay as it is so in situations like that you just have to tell the customer model that you don't want that so you can do that by saying protected um, timestamps is equal to false like so so once you add false to the timestamps then it won't ask you for the timestamps anymore but if you want to be able to save the date when things were saved then just add the uh, the columns they are right here you can just copy these and create them but for now let's see how it will handle that if we try to refresh and reset okay so access level to app customer timestamps must be public ah, okay sorry about that let's put public shall we and let's try one more time fingers crossed 
Yes, yes. Things are working out. So let's come back here and let's browse. And you see a record has been created, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. All right, now, uh, once we are done with adding here, I want us to, in the next video, to display and see how we can edit and delete these records. Okay, I'll see you then.